This week on Hunting University, Dirt heads west to the wide open state of Wyoming for an antelope stalk with our good friend and owner of Wyoming Professional Hunters, Jay Lesser. CZUSA's Alice Polocheva joins our host and attempts to outscore old dirt at Jay's world-class ranch in Glenrock. Alice will also take a close look at some of Jay's big muleys on this week's Hunting University. I'm looking at a buck with the Rexo towel. I have to ring my ceiling just to get him on the wall. He's right where I want him, got him in my sight. I grab my bow and let the arrow fly. My heart's pumping fast, but my nerves are still. This seems like a dream, but I know it's for real. Show. It's time for Hunting University with Charlie Ingram and Dirt King. Hunting University is brought to you by CZ USA, Hornady, Mid South Shooter Supply, Heavy Shot, and Laser Genetics. What about it, Jay? All those ones on the other side of the hill there, there's a couple of good ones. One's about a half-size replica of a big buck, and the others are two-thirds size replica of a big buck. I'm getting used to it, man. <laughs> Today, our host, Dirt King, finds himself relaxed and in pleasant company. He's glassing the Wyoming pronghorn herd with his old hunting buddy, CZ USA's Alice Polocheva, and one of the West's premier antelope guides, Jay Lesser. 2008 was a particularly busy season for Jay at his ranch in Glenrock, Wyoming, because that October he was given the task of guiding a bull rider, an NFL veteran, and our show host on a week-long Wild West safari. So many animals were taken on that hunt that Dirt decided to turn his best trophy from that season into the first one for this year. So we go back to 2008, and what do you know, it's Dirt's birthday. My birthday's in October, and I've been really, really lucky. I've gotten some really big animals on my birthday. Dirt, I found some dinosaur bones over here. I was wondering if maybe you're the one that killed him. <laughs> yes, son, I was here hunting back in 1642, and I did shoot that dinosaur. So, 1642. That would make Dirt at least 366 years old. With that many years in the field, he ought to know a little something more about how to score these antelope. He kept saying, what's wrong with that one? What's wrong with that one? And I would tell him, well, that's just a two-thirds scale model of what we're looking for. Jay Lesser says, no, no, no. He must have said no on 300 <laughs> animals. It's just gotten to be an embarrassment for me having this guy around not knowing what's going on. And then when I take him to these places, nobody ever wants him to come back. John is the craziest of them all, completely out there in left field having a big time. So with all the mutual respect flying around, it's a wonder Dirt has seen anything. But Jay has kept a keen eye on the prairie and has found the buck that sets the model for all the others. When we found the animal, he was way off in the distance. I mean, we had range finders running, people going, I can't lock on this. Well, they couldn't because it's too far. It was really open, so we would sneak along. I would peek over a ridge alone with the guys staying back behind me a little bit. When the antelope would drop in a draw, we would all duck walk at high speed forward. The first estimation was that we had been about two and a half miles off the road. And that's when we got the second glimpse of him. The next time we saw him, we know he was over a thousand because the ridge that he was on, I was glassing at a thousand to eleven hundred. So we get to climb that. When we come up over the top of the last ridge, the antelope were feeding in the bottom. They didn't know we were there. So we were able to set up for the shot. And of course these animals are far enough away from us and we're configured so that they obviously cannot see us. I put the cross sticks down and as they came up, Dirt got on it with the rifle. The animal moved forward slightly, and when he turned, we gave Dirt the range. It was 500 yards. He pulled the trigger, and he had his big buck. So there you go. You're on him. Good you shot. You hit him. You got you him. You got him. Good shot. You got Dirt. him. 
I was having to wait with my heart kind of went chink chink before I get that there go. 500. Holy mackerel. If you're interested in the greatest antelope hunt on the North American continent, let me tell you something. Jay is the king of the walk out here. So if you've got aspirations of booking an antelope hunt, mule deer hunt, elk hunt, call Jay Lesser. Looks like a shot. Huh? Look at that. Chips. You like him? I like him. Yeah, I do too. I like him, buddy. I like him too. You I give really us a like run for the money, hoss. <laughs> I believe Jay's got this game figured out. I think he's done it once or twice. With this big buck on the ground, Dirt can finally close the book on 2008. But don't worry, we'll have lots of action from this year when Hunting University returns. We're in Glen Rock, Wyoming with Jay Lesser of Wyoming Professional Hunters, and our guest, CZ USA's Alice Polocheva, is more than thrilled with her first day in the field. The weather was beautiful. It was the first uh, four days in October and uh, I think the first surprise was how huge his hunting area is. So to cover that you need a good equipment, you need a good truck. We had good hiking boots and uh, I did practice walking and stalking before we left. So when we got into the truck I couldn't believe how many animals we've seen. It reminded me a lot about Africa because you won't go a few miles without seeing herds of animals whether it was antelopes or uh, the mule deers. Alice has had the opportunity to glass some world-class animals, but for one overlook, something else catches everyone's eye. While we were mule deer hunting in the morning, we spotted a herd of antelope that were being chased by a coyote. That was very interesting, you know, that a coyote would actually go after antelopes. So we watched them through binoculars and we, we spotted a very nice buck and we thought, well, that would be one of those shooters. We made a mental note of where we'd saw them and we ended up coming back later Probably an hour later, we spotted uh, them again. With Jay's knowledge, it was amazing to watch him work because he said, okay, well, they moved over this hill and over this ridge, and uh, there's a good chance you know, they will be on the other side. So uh, we spotted them, and then they start running again. And that's when Jay said, all right, well, it's time for our feet to get some work. There was a big thunderstorm coming in, and the high winds drove the antelope up into an area where they would be out of the wind. So that made them stay long enough that it allowed us to put a stock on them. We went around and crosswind, came in and we ran into a second big bunch of antelope, which is a problem out here because we have so darn many antelope. Here comes the whole herd of antelope, you know, running from left to right. So we just froze and hoped that they won't spook the group that we were after. They fortunately went a direction that didn't scare the first group of antelope that we were after. In the next 30 minutes, we were able to, to get uh, close and just peeked over the, over the top. When we eased up to the edge, I saw a large buck bedded. We got Alice in position. We were getting ready to shoot, and I realized that it just didn't look right. It, wasn't, it just wasn't the right one. We looked around a bit more and found that they were tucked up underneath us. The big buck saw us. He stood up, and only his horns were visible. They took off running. Alice swung around, got ready. They came from underneath us and the buck, you know, was actually easy to find. I put my scope right on him and uh, just waited for the right uh, moment. When the buck paused and turned to make sure his does were with him, she made a beautiful one-shot kill. He was just facing me and we were about 150 yards away. I just took a deep breath, set the trigger, you know, to the head trigger. So just as I was breathing out, I just gently squeezed and uh, sure enough, he didn't go anywhere. That was beautiful. You just okay. surgically removed him right from the center of the group. I guess with hunting, it's not just about the kill, but uh, the whole experience, the feelings and emotions and the experience when you actually have to work for it. And, uh, and I felt I really deserved this animal. I believe he's well and truly expired. See right here falls in comparison to that cutter? Most mm -hmm. of them we've seen, this is right there. Right. This part. So he's got another ear before that, and then he hooks on top of that. That's what we were looking for. Yep, and he's got a very nice point. Yep, character point here. Been fighting a little bit. Yep. Super. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. How many times have you and I been hunting now? Well, it's been, what, three years? Three years. Ago. And uh, several fantastic hunts, and uh, this one was no exception. I tell you what, uh, this gun has never failed me. And I would almost say it's, uh, it has been one shot per animal. 
CZ with our... Ultimate Hunter and 300 Winchester J. She's got her own bases and rings. Let me tell you, it's a hammer, huh? I didn't know that you could make a rifle that had meat-seeking bullets. <laughs> well. <laughs> but she's really tough with it, that's for sure. Well, thank you guys. Couldn't have done it without you. Tremendous antelope, Alice. Tremendous. Jay, you did perfect, buddy. I'm very proud. Thank you. Well, you made the right Glad calls every, every step, buddy. That's a good one. Yep. Y'all stay with us on Hunting University. We're with Jay Lesser, Wyoming Professional Hunters. I'm telling you, this is some kind of party. We're back in Glen Rock, Wyoming with CZUSA's Alice Polocheva, and the spot and stalk method is revealing quite the reward. So this morning, you know, we got up again at 5.30, and uh, it was the last day of the hunt, and I was a little excited because I knew, you know, I would really like to get a mule deer. So when we set out this morning, I just made a joke. I said, Jay, you better get me a nice buck by 10 o'clock. So we started uh, and uh, Jay said, well, I've got a good feeling about the hilly area. We start glassing and uh, we've seen nice bucks and I was almost, well, let's, let's shoot something. Let's hunt. I would like to get my mule deer. And she said, no, wait, let's wait. Sound familiar? It's the same frustration that our host, Dirt King, has felt before when hunting with Jay Lesser. But Jay is not keeping Alice's trigger finger cold to be cruel. He knows that patience and selectivity produce some trophies that his guests could only imagine. During the course of the hunt, we looked at between 20 and 40 mature mule deer bucks a day. And a lot of them were nice, but we take such a limited number of them that I wanted to take something really special and something in an older age class. Sonny, we've seen a group of mature bucks and uh, it would be hard to pick up, you know, which one would be the right one. However, you know, we got a few seconds of looking at the group and uh, so we picked this nice mature buck uh, with a big body. He was definitely older, had a very symmetrical rack. It was exactly what we were looking for, but they went straight away from us. And contrary to popular belief, mule deer don't always stop and look back. These bucks kept going, never offered a shot, went over the top of the ridge. We gave them some time to settle down, but when we went after them, we found out that there was a series of draws, and we didn't know which draw they were in. So we did a sneak and peek up over the edges of each little draw, looking for the big buck. We felt we are getting closer because we couldn't see no animals leave that particular ravine. We noticed a small buck that saw us immediately. We hunkered down, waiting to see what he would do, and he kept looking below him as if there were other deer there. We thought that might be our buck, so we got set up. Some does come up, and they kept looking back behind them. So we got Alice in position, and I stood up in full view of the does and the buck. That made them nervous. They trotted up the other side. This motion created the fact, you know, that, that few does start taking off and then out of the ravine jumped up the big one. And uh, I knew I have him. So that was just picture perfect. He went halfway up the slope, stood broadside, and I was uh, just slightly over 100 yards. And, uh, and I took the shot. Yeah! Oh. All right. <laughs> Good one shot, shot. Alice, baby. Woo. One shot. <laughs> Not dead. I'm actually thinking that Jay's mama might have been a mule deer because he knew exactly where they That's are. Exactly Did you believe right. that? See, he doesn't tell you his tricks. You got to watch it. <laughs> See, what he was doing was watching the deer. Watch the deer. Use them does as pointer dogs, and they told us where the buck was. And then we used the buck's uh, built-in instinct to go uphill to make him come up into our view. That was good, Jay. That was awesome. Thank you very much. Let's go take good a look job. at this. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just because this was another of Alice's one-shot wonders doesn't mean that the recovery will be easy. 100 yards in the prairie can feel like two miles if the terrain is rugged. But the treacherous climb into the canyon is quickly rewarded with Alice's first ever mule deer. Well, it was worth it. All the stalk and you knew where they were. You are awesome, Jay. Well, I'm just glad I could talk you into passing him bucks up for the last three days to hold out for this guy. You see how this deer's face, how light colored he is? Most of them have been black right here. And his teeth, he's actually missing some teeth. This is the age class we're looking for. I guess 24 or 25 inches. All right, let's see. He has beautiful forbs. He just a fraction over 24. Wow, there you go. good guess. We got an inch of spread for about every mile we've walked. Oh yep. my goodness. This is the last day we're going to get to hunt with old Jay Lesser, Wyoming professional hunters, but, but, y'all stay with us because it's not over, we hope. We're going to go see if we can find a big old antelope and then we'll close this thing out.
stay with us on Hunting University. Alice Palocheva from CZ USA. We're in Glen Rock, Wyoming, and our host, Dirk King, is getting ready for his first chance on this trip to take a big Wyoming antelope. You know, I've had the opportunity to hunt with Jay Lesser a lot of times. He's an excellent shooter. He knows the properties. He knows the animals. He knows everything there is to know about it. So if you want to go on a quality hunt out west, old Jay Lesser is one of your guys. In 2008, we had the two clowns with us. We had Justin McBride and John Howell. This hunt should be a lot easier because we didn't have all that clownage. I told Dirk that to maximize his chances of killing a big antelope, maybe he might want to jump in the truck with me in the hopes of finding a truly large buck up in the rough country where we were hunting the deer. So we jump in a pickup and head out across there, and we're seeing antelope and mule deer all the time. I told him to hold out for something really special because we have some very special antelope here. We went back into a rough area that I had seen a large antelope in a few days earlier. We'd been back to look for him once before, and he wasn't in there, but they're fairly territorial, and I had a, a hunch that he might be back. You know, a lot of times it takes you a day, three days, four days even, to find the right animal, but in this case, we just walked right up over the top of a little crest. There they were, a pair of bucks staring us right in the face. The beauty part about Jay is, is he understands shooting so well that it's just an instantaneous thing. Jay picked up his binoculars, he looked at it, and we agreed, of course. When I finally told Dirk, that's the one you want, he looked at me with disbelief because I'd told him so many times that too small, not big enough, that sort of thing. He said, 245. I said, roger that. I set the trigger, let her go. He hits the ground. We had a party. Pulled the trigger and the buck went down in a pile. That's when we realized we were a really long ways away from the pickup. Whew. Oh, man. Man. That Jay Lesser, let me tell you, if you want a quality antelope, he can do it. Now, mine have historically been in the high 70s. I got one or two in the 80. Well, Jay and I have a discussion pretty much about it. He said, man, it's a really good one. I said, yeah, look at me like it's 14 and a half. And he said, you're completely out of your mind. The 16 inches, the holy grail of the antelope, and buddy, you may be pushing it. Good weight, big cutters. See where the ear falls, he's still well above, well above the ear. Yeah, I got a kicker there. Yep. Beautiful buck. I got so sick of that not hardly big enough. I'd already shot 43 times. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have so many good bucks on the ranch that we try to take just the uh, upper 5%, you know. Right. Actually, it's less than that, but you know, we have approximately 3,000 antelope on the ranch and we take 40 bucks. That's a drop in the bucket. Mm. There's no reason they shouldn't all be like this. Oh, he comes out. Uh, eighth shy of 16. 15 Good. and 7 eighths. That's the 170 whitetail, that's the 350 bull elk. Yeah. That's, that is an awesome one. That's the holy grail, 16 inches. This is the highlight of our hunt there. Well, I'm really tickled to death. I've uh, had a really good four or five days. Yep. See how fast it flies, I can't even count. <laughs> it's been a good time. If you have any aspirations of ever hunting one of these mammoth antelopes, Go to Hunting University, there'll be a direct link over there and other information tell you exactly how you can get in touch with Jay Lesher. Glad to be with you. I know these people had a good time. I had a great time. See you all again on the Hunting University.